All right, what is going on, my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? It has been some time since we have spoken. The reason for that is that life is a tumultuous motherfucker. It does not stop rocking the boat. Gotta throw shit at me that takes up my time. And I'm okay with it, because all of it is leading toward bigger and better things. Eventually, I will be speaking from the midst of a 17-story mansion built specifically for me, tailored specifically for me. All the door frames will be bigger than normal because I am a bigger than normal human being. There will be dogs everywhere. There will be game rooms and whatever. The, I don't. What the fuck would you fill a 17-story mansion with? <laughs> I would get bored after, like, I think the third story of just throwing a bunch of novelty shit everywhere and then it's just kind of like, all right. I'm gonna rent out the rest of this. But no elevators, though. Motherfuckers gonna get their exercise marching up to their rooms. That's right. Anyway, man, could you imagine moving in to a 17-story place where the... I'm sure many people have moved into... A, not, probably not 17 stories, because that is skyscraper status. But, like, five, six, seven-story places where they were had to carry stuff up. Like, an elevator was broken, or there weren't elevators in the first place. Like, I'm sure people had to suffer through that fuck that noise <laughs> i would just be like nope you know what i'm gonna just sleep out in the yard like hey what's up i'm in 72a i'm sleeping on the on the grass you can just you know holler at me if too many bugs start getting at me and just you know let me let me just rest in peace here fuck going up seven flights of stairs in order to carry up like a mattress or you know furniture and stuff like that nah -uh. anyway getting a bit off topic um you know obviously work is work sometimes like get extra hours sometimes i don't it seems like that's starting to wind down it's kind of a bad thing because i kind of like me some money and thus getting and you know getting less hours means getting less money uh that is my calculus education at work right there my brilliant mathematical mind coming to that conclusion so i i know that was a toughie for a lot of you to follow but thank you for trying at least but that is another thing that is bodying me right now it's cal it's bottom it's bodying all of us like you can tell that calculus is wearing at everybody at this point. Because this is now the second stage of calculus. This is the second semester in a row that people have taken calculus. And it's getting to a point where, like, all of the problems are more frustrating than they are, like... I don't necessarily want to say fun. Because, honestly, I don't think anything... In, in general, math is pretty fun. Because you're basically, you know, you're putting together a puzzle. You're figuring things out. You're using the analytical part of your mind. And... It's a wonderful thing. At least for me, I really enjoy mathematics. But the stuff we're getting into now, at least for a while, we were getting into... Um, God damn it, I can't remember the specific terminology for it. But basically figuring out how... Oh, well, it's, it's all just based around work and force. How much work would be required to, you know, like empty a 8-meter tank that's filled up to the brim... Uh, you know, so how much work does it take to pump it all out, pump it all up at the top and whatnot, how much force is put on the bottom of said tank when it's full, that kind of thing. Um, then before that, we were, I, I can't even remember because I don't want to remember. It's blocked out in my head. It's going to bite me when we get to test time. But everybody is just so, they were so involved. They were so loud. There was constant discussion. Everybody was, you know, making friends and shit. And now, like, the class for the past two weeks has been nothing but dead silence no talking almost no questions everybody is just sitting there with the deadpan like what have i done with my life that led me to this chair this desk right here and forced me to suffer through this <laughs> like what has been done and now we're getting into sequence uh, sequences and series and stuff and how to uh determine proper um, God damn, I can't even, like, I, I legitimately can't even think of proper term, terminology for it all. But figuring out where it's going to go, whether it converges or diverges, whether or not it's, um, or at least trying to figure out what the equation is that determines the sequence or series that you have been given. Um, it's all just, you know, and th the entire thing at the back, looming over everything, is that you have to utilize limits. If anybody ever told me, oh yeah, dude, I really enjoy limits, I, do, I would not believe them. That would not be a trustworthy... That is a sociopath right there. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not saying that seriously. So if any of you do uh, enjoy limits, you do you. But at least at this moment in time in my life, limits can go fuck themselves. And But it's so... it's Everything has become like this really massive experience to get through partial problems. And I have to do, you know, like we're getting 
worksheets that we have to take home and finish, which are anywhere from, you know, like 15 to 20 problems by themselves. And then we have chapter section uh, for homework in my math lab, which are anywhere from, you know, like 30 to 40 questions. And every single question is like this 25 part workup that is just, it's so time consuming and it's just, oh my God, like I have to set aside a day just to get through like two sections of homework and it's just it's cr not obviously not an entire day but it's just the amount of time that i have spent on this level of calculus far out classes the amount of time i have spent in any other class i have ever taken f overall for homework and uh just preparation overall to ensure i'm not massively failing everything and despite all of that despite all of that i'm gonna go check my email right now we are now getting into the period of time where anybody that has applied for proper colleges, they're now starting to send out responses to people, whether or not they are in. Uh, and I have not yet gotten any responses yet. And it's just, you know, that kind of nervousness, because it's like, it's highly unlikely that I'm going to get denied by every single place I applied to. But, you know, Murphy's Law. And if I do end up getting denied by every single school that I applied to, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. I am just like, that is petrifying. Like, it really is. I am not a person that really dwells on, you know, like, chance, probability. I am very much the kind of person that I look at the short term. And that's actually kind of my problem is that I spent so long looking at the short term and preparing for the short term and ensuring I was ready for what's going to potentially happen a month from now or two months from now I was not thinking about what could potentially be happening two years or three years from now thus I am 26 years old and I am still in college and that is the consequence of that act and that is my own personal fault but you know again we make mistakes in life we grow from them but it really is to the point now where it's like this is going to define my future this is one specific point that i can look at not from hindsight where i'm like oh wow yeah everything that's kind of led up to this i can pretty much trace back to that one moment i can look forward and say everything that's about to happen to me is going to be determined by this moment and that's a scary fucking thing it's not something that i particularly enjoy um so I got that going on. I got other, you know, regular life. Everything is just going on. Fighting games seem rather unimportant behind all of that probability, all of that stuff that's happening. And so because of that, I really haven't been getting... I think uh, I'll wind up having posted one of the Alex videos before I post this. Like, I'll post this in between the Alex videos. Um, so you'll know I am getting into it a little bit, but like prior to Street Fighter V dropping, I was really looking forward to getting back into an offline scene because um, one of the things I really cannot do is weekend tournaments. I would have loved to go to NorCal Regionals because NorCal Regionals is in Sacramento. Uh, it's like, I think I want to say the hotel they use, or not the hotel, but the venue they use, wherever they were, at least last year. I didn't check it this year, but last year it was about a 45 minute drive away from me. But the problem with that is, on Saturdays, I work from, like, anywhere, you know, starting somewhere around 3 a.m., and I will not get home until probably around 1 p.m. It's very rare that I wind up getting home before then. And so, obviously, when you're looking at a fighting game, those pools start at 10 a.m. That's already three hours, so I would basically have to, like, sign up and beg for special consideration to be like please put me in a later pool because i'm not gonna be able to make it before that time i'm sure most tournament organizers if you do sign up early enough if you're not like a last minute right like if you're not walking into the venue at two and being like hey can you throw me in a pool somewhere <laughs> that's not gonna go well for you if you're head to headed to a major but i'm sure if you did you know like you they were like oh hey signups are up and then you sign up and you put in like a comment or a note or something or you, or you email the tournament organizer themselves and you're like hey what's up my name is blah 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 uh i work on i know pools for this game start on saturday i know they start early on saturday i have to work um, until this amount of time, I just, I probably won't be able to get here, and I would really appreciate it if you could try to put me in a later pool so that, you know, I'm not screwed over by my work, um, and it's the same thing on Sunday, but Sunday would be irrelevant because I finish on Sunday, Sunday's a lot easier for me, so I finish by, like, 9 or 10, 
usually. And even then, the games wouldn't start until later on to begin with. So Sunday would be fine. Friday would be fine. It's Saturday that's the sticking point. And, like, I don't want to use a vacation day or a sick day or anything. I actually don't get sick days because I'm only a part-time working. Only full-time people get sick days, get official sick days. I do not get them. So the most I could really hope for is to be like, hey, can you just give me this day off and then I don't get any pay? That means I'm sacrificing quite a bit of money in order to go spend money. Um, and I'm certainly not a good enough player to win a major. I can freely admit that. And I think I don't think I'm going to get any argument about that fact. Um, but so you just... Uh, hindsight. But then by the time I remember... I keep forgetting that NCR happens in Sacramento. Because it used to be Bay Area. And I'm used to every single, you know big northern california event that has to do with fighting games being in the bay area so it's not until like two weeks before where people like hey come check out ncr at sacramento i'm like oh fuck i forgot and obviously you know two weeks in they're not gonna give me any you know special treatment they're not gonna care that i don't get to you know don't get off work and won't be able to get there until probably 2 p.m or 3 p.m um but you know, so hindsight twenty twenty, it's just something that I'll probably I should probably try to you know maintain a calendar and just write down like, well, hopefully I won't even be it. And if if I am still in the Sacramento area next year, I done fucked up. <laughs> so yeah, let's hope I'm not in a place to go to NCR next year, at least not easily. Um, but anyway, moving past that, I really before Street Fighter Five came out, I was really looking into you know like I want I'm gonna grind this game online. I'm gonna get to a point of comfortableness where I can hold my own online and I'll start going to offline stuff um, because there's a weekly every Thursday for Street Fighter V called Churning the Butter by Showdown GG, I think is what they're called. And it happens every single Thursday in San Francisco. So it's a bit of a drive for Well, not a bit of a drive for me. It is a very significant drive for me. It's about three hours uh, if you add in traffic on top of everything. And then I have to pay for toll booths on the way there, toll booths on the way back. And these assholes had to make the... T the toll used to be $5 both ways. Now it's $6 to get in and $5 to get out. Why? <laughs> used to be so easy. You just hand a dude a $5 bill and you're on your way. Now you gotta worry about two bills. That's too difficult for me, man. It's too much prearrangement. I'm not that big of a planner. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I did go, I don't, who cares, we don't want to talk about that. But I, I did want to start going to those tournaments, that was the plan, so you know, like, I get some offline experience, I get to grind against some really good offline players, none of that happened. I haven't grinded online at all, in any way, shape, or form. I want to say I've probably played around like 60, 70 matches of Street Fighter V total at this point, not including beta, uh, but just since the game released, I've played under 100 matches for sure, like there's no question about that. I have not gone to a single churning the butter. <laughs> I have not gone to anything offline related. And yeah, life boots you in the behind. That being said, I bought a PlayStation Vita. That was another boot in the behind. I almost didn't. I very nearly didn't. They actually, let me go see if the listing has been changed. I doubt it because obviously the Vita has been out for a rather significant period of time at this point. But when I looked at it, um, when I looked at the official Amazon listing of the PlayStation Vita, it does not tell you. Okay, so it still does not tell, as far as I can tell, it still doesn't tell, it does not mention a single thing about how much memory is featured inside the system itself. So let me go to the PlayStation.com official listing of the Vita that gives like that should give the actual specs for it. I would hope that they would give you all of the information possible regarding the system, regarding everything about it. It's taking a bit to load. Oh, come on, Firefox, don't freeze. There we go. They have a listing that you can watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michael Bay film before they mention anything about potential memory no there is not a single mention let me actually just search memory i'm sure you heard that bing right there that means nowhere on here let me check gigabytes no gigabytes so there is not a single mention on the official playstation uh website of how much memory the playstation vita has in the console itself and the reason for that is that I believe when I looked it up, it has a gigabyte. It has one gig. 
of memory, of in-house memory. And then after that, you have to buy memory cards. Now, I'm sure anybody that owns a 3DS, of which there are far more 3DS owners than there are Vita owners, you just, the 3DS, you just get to use flashcards. You can use anybody's third-party memory cards. You can use them in the 3DS. You don't have to go to Nintendo for them. Vita? You have to go through Sony. There are no third-party memory cards for the PlayStation Vita. So now you're asking, okay, well, with that knowledge in mind, how much do the memory cards cost? I should have been there beforehand. I want to say it cost me $68 for a 32 gigabyte memory card. Let's check this out. 8 gigabyte memory card for $23. 64 for $99.50. 32 is currently on sale for $61.01. So somewhere in the $60 range is how much I got a 32 gigabyte card. Um, and now, to be perfectly honest, you can get away without buying one of these. If you have no intention whatsoever of downloading games on the PlayStation Vita, you can get away with never buying a memory card. And I would highly advise that you never buy a memory card, because fuck those prices. That shit is ridiculous. Uh, that being said, if you are like me and you're basically bu buying a PlayStation Vita so that you can download old PSP games off of PSN, you need a memory card. You're not going to be able to get away with only having um, one gigabyte of memory. And so I had to buy one. And so I was looking for that because I knew you had to get memory cards, just, but I didn't know that you could only get Sony memory cards. So when I buy the, when I put the Vita in my uh, you know, shopping cart, I put Persona 4 Golden in the shopping cart, I put Miramasa, whatever the hell the subtitle is for the PlayStation Vita version of that game in the shopping carts. And then I go and I look and the memory card costs more than both of those games combined almost twice as much as both of those games combined i think playstation i think persona i think persona 4 golden check that out cost me like 15 i want to say that cost me 18 it was on sale and then the miramasa game oh the miramasa game cost me a little bit more so about let's just say forty dollars combined for both of those games and 65 ish for the memory card i could have bought another game and it still probably would not have stacked up to the price of that memory card i very nearly turned around and just deleted my cart at that moment when i saw that i was like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> the entire point i waited this long to buy a vita was so that it would be on sale and i could save some money and instead you're telling me i gotta buy this fucking memory card for sixty dollars and it's not even a gigabyte a dollar i'm basically getting a gigabyte for every two dollars that's ridiculous son you can get like a one terabyte let me actually check that shit out <laughs> how much can you buy a uh, how much does a hard drive an external hard drive cost for its holy shit. <laughs> These are all within the $50 to $60 range. You can get a terabyte of data that you can install on your computer, an extra terabyte of space, of memory, for your computer, for less than you can buy a 32 gigabyte card for the PlayStation Vita. Are you fucking kidding me? What a ripoff that is. If I had actually, if I had, if I had had the thought process to take this all the way to its conclusion, where I compare it to, you know, what's available for computers at this point in time, even let me look at just flashcards. I'm not even gonna look for a specific size. I'm just gonna look for flash card. Okay, well that's not actually what I was looking for. <laughs> it's showing me. Um, what's the actual official goddamn? Um, uh, I guess just memory card. Fuck it. A SanDisk 32 gigabyte memory card costs ten dollars. What's well, like the highest I can get? Oh, look at that! An Elite Performance 64 gigabyte card for twenty three dollars. If I had thought, if I had had the foresight to look at this shit beforehand and see just how stupid the cost was in comparison to other, there's a one twenty eight. That's what I, I was looking for stuff that was in the hundreds. Forty three dollars for a one hundred twenty eight gigabyte memory card. Good God. As such a ripoff for that memory card for the Vita, man. It's crazy. I very nearly turned around. And honestly, if I had looked at that stuff and seen like the price discrepancy between the two, I don't think I would have bought it. I think I probably would have turned around and just not gotten it. That being said, 
Persona 4 Golden is a wonderful game. I love it. I cannot say enough good things about it. The changes they have made to the game have streamlined the process, removed a lot of unnecessary grind from it. It's really, really awesome. I cannot begin to express how goddamn happy I am that uh, they removed the randomness for it. So in, if you have never played any of the Persona games, in Persona 4... Uh, when you fused two Persona together, you were you were able to get you have you fight with these kind of demon like entities called Persona, and the main character can fuse Persona together to get stronger Persona, and um, in that process, those Persona that you are fusing into a new one can pass along certain skills that they have learned, usually three or four of them. Um, previously in Persona Four, that was a completely random process. The game just selected three or four of the moves completely randomly from the pool and just gave them to you. So it was not unlikely that if you were looking for a specific move or a specific couple of moves, that you would sit there and you would tr look at the fuse, look at the information you were about to get. Oh, those moves aren't there. All right, let me back all the way out. Let me go back in and try to fuse these dudes again. Nope, still haven't gotten it. And you just have to go back and forth between the menus over and over and over until the RNG loves you enough to give you the moves that you want. Fuck everything about that. They removed it in Persona 4 Golden. You just get to choose. There are... I don't know what the um, actual... There are certain moves that sometimes you just can't pass on. I don't know the criteria to determine what you can pass on and what you can't pass on. But you still, you know, from everything that you can pass on, you get to choose specifically exactly what you goddamn want. Whew, that was so nice. But, uh, yeah, I'm still going through, you know, all the PSP games I've gotten. I bought, I've downloaded Jean d'Arc and the Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection. And I'm still looking at many other games on my Gamefly queue that I need to browse through and decide whether or not I want to buy them or whether or not I just, you know, want to play them to completion and then I'll never play them again. But, you know, I, I don't regret the purchase of the Vita. But <laughs> sometimes I wonder, because it is kind of that whole that point that you would try to make is like, all right, you know, I don't regret purchasing this. I don't regret spending money on this. But should I have given Sony money for that memory card? <laughs> do they deserve... I mean, no, there's no way in hell they should cost as much as they do. There's no reason for them to have designed the Vita to only accept memory cards built first party aside from, hey, give us more money. And, oh man, it's just, you know, it's that thing where you're like, you, you realize this decision was made solely to make money. So then you got to kind of sit there and be like, do I really want to give them the money for it? Or should I just, you know, forget that experience happening in my life? <sighs> it's just sad. Plus, you know, the Vita is basically a dead console at this point in time. It did not, not, it's not a dead console, but in America, it's a dead console. It does not receive many of the games that come over from Japan, a very significant amount of them that are still being released in the United States are also receiving a PS4 version because they know they're going to sell anything that they release. They're going to sell more of on the PS4 than they will possibly sell on the Vita. That's just, that's a simple fact of life. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, such a bad, such a bad business decision. And it did lead to, I think, a lot, uh, I think it was a significant factor as to why the PlayStation Vita has not really caught on, didn't really succeed as a handheld, it certainly cannot even be moderately considered a competitor of the 3DS. <sighs> Speaking of things that have not really quite caught on, the Nintendo Wii U. Let's go check out, let's go, let's go see if the Nintendo Wii U is on sale anywhere. I still regret, there was, it was during, it was during the Christmas period, actually, that, um, the bundle for, they had a, Play, uh, PlayStation, they had a Nintendo Wii U bundle. They still sell it, but not for anywhere near the price that it was going for, that has Smash Brothers and Splatoon. Both games, plus the console, and it was going for like $280 or something. Like, I actually, I think it was $260. For a very low price. And I was like, you know what, nah, I'm gonna wait for a better deal. I, I bet there'll be better deals than that. <laughs> nope. Not even a little bit. I regret not having bought it at that point in time because there has never been anything even close to the deal that that was since then. And so I'm just kind of sitting here waiting and hoping that the Nintendo Wii U goes on sale again for a better price at some point in time because I got poking just sitting on my shelf gathering dust with no console to play it with. And I even bought the Hori pad. Hori made a, a, a pad specifically for poking. Like right now I think 
the, at least for now, like I'm sure there will be developers in the future who are like, oh yeah, that pad looks nice. We'll put in functionality for it. But right now, the pad, you can only use it in Pokin, which is kind of amazing. Uh, but I bought that too because it was like $20. That's pretty nice for a controller. And it's certainly a better, you know, better to use that than the game pad. Screw that. So yeah, there's, there's Nate's little update on life. Thank you for listening. I'll talk to y'all again, hopefully soon. <laughs> Peace out.